Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is April and today is another video in the core concept series. So just as a reminder, this is a back to the basic series where we really are trying to understand what is going on inside the body so that we can better care for our clients with acute and chronic conditions. Today's core concept is going to be the concept of perfusion. So last time we talked about gas exchange, a very, very important core concept for us as nurses, and equally as important is the concept of perfusion. So when we think about perfusion, perfusion is defined as adequate arterial blood flow through the peripheral tissues, that's called peripheral perfusion, and blood that is pumped by the heart to oxygenate major body organs, and that's called central perfusion. And we really do need both in order to function as human beings. Now, perfusion is a normal physiologic process. However, without adequate perfusion, cellular death can occur. So we'll start to see cellular death that affects our organs and all of our body functions. So perfusion, very, very vital to human survival. Now, when we think about interrelated concepts, clotting, which we haven't talked about yet, gas exchange, very vital to perfusion, and then tissue integrity. Now, the scope of perfusion is important to understand. Um, perfusion is a continuum of the heart's ability to adequately pump blood to the body and the patency of arteries to adequately supply blood back down to our peripheral tissues. So when perfusion is altered, we get ischemia, which is what happens or the consequence of impaired or altered perfusion. And then because of ischemia, we can get tissue death, which is also called infarction. And that may sound familiar as you think about things like myocardial ischemia and myocardial infarction or that heart attack. Those are all consequences of impaired or altered perfusion. There are many risk factors for impaired or altered perfusion. Some of them are modifiable and some of them are non-modifiable. So when we think about those modifiable risk factors that we can change, we think about smoking, lack of physical exercise or that sedentary lifestyle. We think about obesity. On the non-modifiable side, things such as age, we know that older adults are more prone to altered perfusion. Gender, we know that males are more prone, especially to myocardial altered perfusion, so the heart attack. And then family history plays a part as well. Now, our clients that have hyperlipidemia, diabetes mellitus type 1 or type 2, peripheral vascular disease and arterial sclerosis are also at very high risk for both altered central and altered peripheral perfusion. So let's talk about the consequences again of decreased perfusion. So of course we have normal perfusion on one side of the continuum and then we have infarction as the far side uh, on the uh, of altered perfusion. Now when we have decreased central perfusion that's when we end up with that myocardial infarction or a stroke or hypovolemic shock, or cardiogenic shock, or obstructive shock. On uh, when we have decreased peripheral perfusion, that's when we end up with skin ulcers or gangrene, especially in our lower extremities. And of course, sitting right through the middle between normal perfusion and infarction, we do have ischemia because that's where our problems start. Ischemia is altered perfusion, and the result of ischemia is infarction. Okay, so let's talk about per perfusion assessment. So we want to take a good client and family history. So we're looking for all those things that are risk factors, modifiable and non-modifiable. For central perfusion, we're going to see a client that maybe has dyspnea, dizziness, syncope, that chest pain that we associate with heart attacks hypotension, tachycardia, as the heart tries to compensate for this problem, diaphoresis, anxiety, mental confusion as blood uh, flow and therefore oxygen is diminished to our brain, and then we might even see those cardiac dysrhythmias. Peripheral perfusion, decreased hair distribution on those lower extremities, diffuse pain of the lower extremities, coolness, pallor, cyanosis, again, of those extremities because blood is oxygen and we're not getting good blood flow or oxygen down to those extremities. And then of course, our peripheral pulses will be diminished. As far as interventions to handle altered perfusion, vasodilators will promote blood flow and then vascular intervention might be necessary to open up narrowed or occluded arteries. From a health promotion and disease prevention perspective, 
our best chance at reducing the risk of altered perfusion is to reduce those modifiable risk factors. So stopping smoking, good nutrition, that heart healthy diet, regular exercise, frequent blood pressure screenings, treating hypertension, treating hyperlipidemia, glucose management for diabetics, and then lab work for early detection of any problems. Okay, it's really difficult to talk about perfusion without talking about the neurovascular assessment. So very, very important that you understand what I like to call the six P's of the neurovascular assessment. And actually there's a seventh one that we could throw in and we will talk about today. So when we think about the traditional five P's of the neurovascular assessment, we think about pain, because whenever we have decreased blood flow and therefore decreased oxygen to an extremity, it becomes very painful. We also will have pulselessness, so those diminished or absent peripheral pulses. The extremity will be pale or cool, so pallor. Paresthesia, that's the numbness and tingling that we get um, when we have decreased blood flow. And then eventually we can't move that extremity because there's that we're having that ischemia, so paralysis. Those are the traditional five Ps of the neurovascular assessment. But I like to add in a sixth P, which is pocothermia. Pocothermia is the inability of the extremity to maintain temperature because when we don't have that good blood flow, that extremity is going to get cold. And then if we wanna throw in a seventh, we could say the P is puffiness. So usually when we have that decreased blood flow and decreased oxygen, that extremity will swell or become edematous. So it's very important that you can perform a neurovascular assessment and that you understand what the components of that assessment are. Okay, guys, so that's everything I have for you today related to perfusion. Again, remember perfusion, very, very important, vital, um, concept for us as nurses. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment below, or you can certainly contact me uh, via my email or on my Twitter account. Now, if you're not following me on Twitter, I do post every weekday on Twitter, both uh, test taking strategy tips, practice NCLEX style questions with answers and rationales, inspiration, uh, lots of different things that are going on on my Twitter account. So I would encourage you to head over there and follow me so that you're not missing out on any of that content. And always don't forget that there is a case study that goes along with these core concept videos. So there is a case study in my Etsy shop on perfusion. And I would love it if you would go over there and check that out. I will leave the link to my Etsy shop in the description box below. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next core concepts video. Yeah.